<laughs> so, welcome neophytes and cenobites to Tibble's Apprentice. Uh, I chose neophytes because noob just sounded derogatory. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, so neophytes, that's, that's people starting out. And cenobites, before, uh, before Clyde Barker appropriated that for his... Uh, S and M demons and stuff. Oh yes, actually is a monastic uh, community to, that comes together to learn. No kidding. Yeah, and so I figured, you know, neophytes and cenobites. That would be. Uh, my wife warned me not to use that. We'll see how long this lasts. So, <laughs> <laughs> before we get into discussion of the keywords that we were going to talk about today, mm. um, I thought we'd uh, we. Have our little upkeep here and clean up any things from, from that. So last yes, show, on tap, yes, on tap, now upkeep. Um, episode 30 will go down as the cursed episode. Um, that one was just went online today. Oh, okay. um, yeah, yeah. Anything that could possibly go wrong with that um, did. So that was me opening up the Planeswalker deck and taking a look at it. Now last time you and I sat down and we looked at right what we would, uh, what we would upgrade and stuff. Um, this time I did an opening, I did the, uh, the cards, and I tried to make improvements based just on the, uh, the packs that I gave, came with it and stuff. Okay. So I did some playing and stuff. And then, of course, the sound went out on that. And just You can oh, go funny. back. There should be a link to this. You, you can see the whole thing if you choose to. Um, but I talked about that, and I got a chance to open the, uh, the premium pack, too. So oh, I nice. got some cool cards in there. Oh, nice. So... Um, Anyhow, uh, one other thing too, if you want to support the show until we get our Patreon running and so on, uh, check out Merkwood Trader. Um, you can find all kinds of cool stuff there, mostly necklaces and so on, but you'll find some spin down necklaces there. Um, I'll maybe flash that up on screen and see that. So that'll help support the show in the meantime. Uh, like I said, we are trying to build a community, so be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. But, uh, well, let's get on to keywords. Oh, yeah. So, some time ago, Brian brought up keywords, what my favorite keywords were. Mm. And I completely screwed it up by not answering the question because oh. I immediately went for effects and mechanics and so on. So, I did a lot of extensive research and compiled a list of all the keywords in Magic. Oh, yeah. um, and by all the best ones are on there. All too. the best ones, absolutely. They're all on here at this up, <laughs> up to this point. I think there's maybe the new four things that are in uh, Throne of Eldraine that are not here yet. Ah, uh, yes. Um, okay. And by extensive research, I of course meet. I, I went to uh, to Yahoo, typed in keywords, and I printed out the list. But here is the list. Um, I gave you some kind of vague instructions, which were to choose five keywords. Yes and keywords from the expert level expansion. Um, I also was lucky enough to be able to ask both Brian and Josh. And the reason I gave those vague instructions was I wanted to see where we overlapped without any, oh, you know, nice. so the play group, okay. you know what I mean? Who, who's gonna pick the same thing? So um, I've got five to talk about, you've got five to talk about. Now we wanna revisit this topic probably pretty soon. All right. And talk about specific keywords for commander okay. and what I what I would like to add to that is specific car well we'll get to that later we'll get to that later that comes right. okay okay I have a list here I'm gonna go down it in just alphabetical order but that's cool at least one by one one by one my first thing that of course I want to talk about is buyback okay. buyback is simply an awesome mechanic that I allows agree. you to spend that extra mana and get that card back. Uh, the importance of this comes not only in the fact that you get to replay that same arguably powerful spell over and over, mm -hmm. but it denies them the ability to kill it in your graveyard. Bajuka Bog, whatever. It doesn't oh, yeah. go to there. Or um, in that way, it, it keeps it in your hand. Now, if they, uh, I don't know, if they him to Toraki or whatever and stuff, you're in trouble. Right. Um, but buyback is one of the things on this list of about 110 
that stood out to me. That was one of the first things to jump out to me. What about you? What's your, what was the first one that you chose or which one? Oh yeah. So I started magic around uh, fourth edition ice age. So <laughs> the keyword that stuck out to me was cumulative upkeep. Ah. Now cumulative upkeep, I mean, it, it makes sense in a I, way because you know, you, you, you have this powerful effect usually on an enchantment or something like that. Mm -hmm. And, and for, in order for you, the planeswalker to keep that, uh, enchantment out, you have to focus your magical energy into keeping it out. Okay. And so, um, so yeah, I think it's a pretty cool mechanic in that sense. Okay. Um, and these are from the expert sets, which means that these didn't necessarily get reprinted in later sets. As a matter of fact, there's a few looking through here. I don't even know what they do. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, you don't see a lot of um, cumulative upkeep these days on cards, but um, they are there. And if you're playing commander, you've got to be ready for it because that's something that's going to be a potential at any point to, to encounter. Oh, yeah. uh, the newer one, or a newer one that I picked or came up with um, was Explore. Mm, yeah. So Explore. The mechanic of looking and seeing if you need a mana, or if you get a mana, and if not, knowing what that next card is, it kind of combines uh, some of the best abilities and some of the things that you need into a single mechanic that kind of gets you further ahead in the game. Oh yeah, Explore is great. Yeah. Not only, you know, are you like looking around for the best <laughs> cards, right? But like, <laughs> okay, so at, at worst, you um, decide whether you want your next card or not. Right. If you don't want it, you put pitch it into the graveyard. Um, at best, you know you, you get to draw that that land card and right. get it out of the way. Right. Right. Um, maybe you need that mana. You can play it out. This is usually what happened. And of course, since this is one of the more recent ones that was being played a lot through. Um, through the Ixalan block mm -hmm. and so on. So I uh, made great use of that in numerous decks recently. Mm -hmm. um, what else did you have? Well, you know, talking about Explore, like there are a lot of cards that took advantage of Explore and, and triggered on, on Explore as well. Right, absolutely. So that's, you know, that kind of dominated the meta for a second. For sure, for um, sure. The next, or the next mechanic is, uh, for me, is Echo. Echo. <laughs> now, Echo. I have a love-hate relationship okay, with I'm, Echo. Okay, I'm glad that you went that direction yeah. with it because I, I I don't like Echo. So I'm interested in hearing what your love, because I mostly have a hate relationship with Echo. Yeah, so Echo came out during uh, Urza's block. Mm -hmm. I think it was Urza's uh, Destiny, I want to say, or mm -hmm. Urza's Saga, maybe. Okay. But anywho, so Echo, you uh, you cast a spell. It could... It, it was a uh, permanent spell, so right. whatever stayed out on the field. And um, you had a uh, second cost that you had to pay during your next upkeep right. to keep that permanent in play, otherwise you sacrificed it. Right. So, you know, me, back then I was, I was like the biggest Timmy. There was this one um, card called Cradle Guard, uh -huh. which was an uncommon. Mm -hmm. It was... Um, I believe it was three mana, two green and a generic. Right. And it was like, it was like a um, a four or five creature, something like that. Uh -huh. It was pretty big. It was pretty beefy for its stats. Okay. For its cost. For its cost. But you had okay. That echo cost afterwards right. that tied up your next turn, and that's where the hate part comes in. <laughs> because yeah, you, you have this, you know, you have this uh, above rate creature or or permanent. Right. But then you tie up your next turn, right? Um, keep, keeping it out there. So. Any way to get around that? At that time, we talk a little bit, and the reason we bring this up too is just the power creep, the level of, of cards that are out there and the abilities. Um, some of these things were keywords, were, were drawbacks that you can just circumvent these days and mm -hmm. stuff. Was there any way back there that you were able to, to circumvent that, or were you just willing to commit? So here, I mean, so 
certain cards had impact when they for, when they came into the battlefield. Right. And so whether you paid the echo cost or not wasn't important. It was strong already, enough that you already got the the benefit from them coming into the battlefield. Okay. Um, as far as like circumventing the cost on on the next turn, um, not really. Like especially <laughs> I mean, like take that cradle guard for example, like. It was just a big dumb creature. Right. If I wanted that big dumb creature to stay out. I had to pay that cost. You had to pay that cost. I'm thinking about uh, at this point if you had enough mana rocks and stuff. But usually, mm. not always, but usually, I'm thinking that the echo creature. You're playing it for speed. You're trying to get out there, and therefore your mana is tied up. You right. don't necessarily have the resources at this point mm. to be able to come up with any shenanigans. Mm. But if you did. Good for you. Yeah. Go ahead and tell me what your next one was, too. Uh, okay, so the next one is uh, Rebound. Rebound, okay. So Rebound is uh, specific to uh, instants and sorceries. Um, basically, you cast one of those spells, and you exile it as it resolves. Right. Okay, so you get your effect from the spell. Then during your next turn, during your upkeep... You, you may uh, cast the spell without paying its mana cost. Nice. So, um, so um, yeah. I was going to say, almost the opposite of Echo. Yeah, it's, it's a two-for-one. Yeah. It's a two-for-one special. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, being able to remove, um, let's say, two creatures for the same, for the same um, um, opportunity cost, the, the same card. Okay. You know, goes a long way. That's why sweepers are, you know... Especially in Commander, you know, yeah, very, very important. Important. but things that like draw you cards. Even mm -hmm. like if I am able to draw a card off of this one card uh, or two cards, right? Um, and then draw an additional two cards the next turn, right? That's fantastic. It's just value for yeah. all the way through. Absolutely. Well, the next one I had to talk about was in fact. Uh, I love love in fact. So uh, more than once, I've probably said this during during uh, recording these. Um, I, I'm a fan of the instant kill, and more than once, uh, that triumph of the horde has mm -hmm. has won me the game. And it's still a discussion that we have amongst ourselves as far as whether or not ten poison is enough yeah, to so. kill. And it is. It definitely is definitely enough. All right, so that's my gripe against it in, in Commander. Okay. Because in Commander, you, you double you double your your um, double your, your life as your resource. Sure. Yeah. So why not double the amount of counters needed to to take someone out of the game? Yeah. It makes sense to me. Ten is ten. It's you know. So so my I guess my and this is not even a good a good reason why, but I. Before there was, in fact, there was just poison, mm -hmm. and I was used to from the from the very beginning. What was it? The hive that made mosquitoes or whatever that, uh, mm -hmm. that inflicted poison counters or whatever. Yeah. So it was like um, a snake basket. There, there was thing a snake too, basket yeah. also. So there was a few of those things. So I was used to playing with this from the beginning, and that's not a good justification to keep any rule around or anything. Um, but it is something that still, I won't say divides play groups, but it is something that, uh, that many people have a, an opinion on and, uh, and, and so <laughs> on. So I, I would hate to see that, uh, that go away. But um, it is pretty it, brutal. It, it can be brutal. It yeah. can be quite the surprise and stuff. What was the next one you had? Uh, transform. Transform. So just, you know, I mean, transform is such a popular mechanic. You, you see it. All the time. Mm -hmm. Well, you see it quite a bit. Yeah. Um, you've seen it in. Um, uh, it started off in what? In Estrad? I believe so. Right? Yeah. Um, started off in Estrad, and then it was um, in Magic Origins, mm -hmm. you know, where you had planeswalkers, or before they became planeswalkers. They, yes. And then they would flip into their, you know. Into their final their, form or their, their, their ultimate form, yeah. whatever the case may be. And so, yeah, transform uh, as far as like game design mm -hmm. is is a really interesting mechanic. You know, it, it allows the uh, um, the game designers just to go wild, really. Right. Um, it, it's fantastic. So it's interesting you should mention game design because the next one that I picked was split second. Oh 
So split second, I think, is absolutely awesome yes. for, if for no other reason, then it gives you a chance to shut off anything else that's going to happen. Being able to... to Embrace the game it for can. a second. Yes, yeah. exactly. And that's awesome. Um, there's so many things that I that I dislike Planeswalkers. That, um, <laughs> but the fact that this card will break the game and just stop, shut down whatever is happening, um, sometimes that's all you need. Sometimes you just need that momentary hiccup, that glitch, that whatever... To, to reestablish your board presence, to do to whatever. Split Second is absolutely one of my favorites. I, I agree. Split Second is pretty great in that way. Absolutely. Um, what's, your, uh, what's your last one? All right, so I chose Riot. Riot. Uh, Riot's the, you know, it came r relatively... Um, relatively new, yeah. Yeah, relatively yeah. new. So a uh, Riot, if you don't know, is the uh, gruel keyword from uh, Ravnica, or the return to return to Ravnica. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, a creature comes into play. If it has Riot, you choose to either put a plus one, plus one counter on it, or give it haste for the turn. Another one of those things that gives you value, depending on what you need or where you're at in the game. Yeah, absolutely. So it's fantastic. It's, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can't say I'm a fan of it, but it's mostly because I'm on the other end of it for stuff. <laughs> Not necessarily from this guy, but absolutely playing in arena. Oh, yeah. You absolutely see that. Um, I have one final one that I was going to talk about. Okay. Um, and then I broke my own rule because I wasn't going to talk. <laughs> While I limited you to those 110 that we were looking for, the last thing I was going to talk about was Wither. Okay. But, but it got replaced. And it got replaced with landfall and the reason i say replaced is because this is actually under the addendum so it was a keyword that was around from the beginning of the game or it was an effect that was listed on the cards i believe that was then assigned the term landfall i'm completely making this up i could be completely wrong but i believe early in the game there were landfall cards that just didn't have the word landfall on it oh okay. they decided to make it a keyword yeah you can check me on this. Um, leave a comment down below if I'm completely full of... Um, so anyhow, and the reason Landfall came up is, and I hate to tie this to any specific thing, but I gotta say the last time we played uh, Commander, mm. I scored with that card. Uh. I scored uh, quite well. Um, obviously I came to win that night uh, based on yeah. the decks that I played. Uh, I dominated the night. Um, yeah, however, that was, that was pretty disgusting. Uh, I did come to win, and somebody cruelly snatched the victory away from me and handed it to somebody else. I did. <laughs> I, I, I can respect that. I can absolutely respect that. I nothing like a good last act of defiance. I'm not even mad. I'm mostly not even mad because I came back to dominate the next game even more, and it was the landfall trigger. I almost said landfall trigger that gave me that game and stuff. I had a tremendous draw. Um, to be fair, or you were playing a new deck, you were playing something you yeah. just decide. Um, the other person playing wasn't necessarily prepared for what happened and stuff. But landfall combined with um, uh, splendid reclamation yeah. uh, that. That was a eventful turn for me and stuff, especially yeah. since I was playing Lord Windgrace. All those guys into the graveyard, the ability to pull all those back with landfall trigger on the table. And that kind of brings to up the point why we were talking about this, why we were talking about keywords. Um, and the main reason is one of the easiest ways, I think, to pump up your deck, to make changes to a deck, is concentrate on keywords. Okay. For, for example, the uh, OK, what's, uh, what's the trickster here? I uh, brought this Oko? up. Yeah, OK. So when we, were, uh, when we were talking that night, I talked about how OK's accomplices was a crap card. OK, yeah. You disagreed with me, but you disagreed because you said three mana for a 2-3 creature isn't bad. It's great. It's got flying. It has that one yes. keyword on there. Yes. My th thought is it's not enough, though. 
And this is where we're talking about the power creep, the level of the abilities of the cards mm -hmm. that we have. Back, well, I'm gonna say, this is where I sound like the old fogey. Back in my day, <laughs> if you wanted to fly, you had to actually spend two extra mana every yeah. time. You wanted a 4-4 four, four creature with flying, you're gonna spend six mana or more. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just the way it was. That's, that's how it yeah, was. It seemed exactly. like, specifically with the flying mechanic, you know, it seemed. So and, and there was a chance that that card would have been like uncommon. Uh, or rare. Exactly, not yeah. common or rare. Exactly. Yeah. So these days, and this is what you pointed out to me then too, is the fact. Well, this is a common card. Well, yeah. Fair enough. Um, but between this and the cursed episode, I was talking about the last one. Oh yes. Uh, I looked simply into upgrading this deck, and the easiest and best way to improve a deck, any deck that, deck that you might have is look for keywords that are going to work together. For yes. example, with this one, and I talk about this in the previous ones, you can watch that too, but um, the fact that this had cards in it, and I'm talking about the, the Planeswalker deck, um, it had cards in there that said non-human creatures. Yes. But this then had humans in it. Well, why not immediately improve the deck by chucking the humans out mm. and sticking with that so that every card that comes out is a non-human creature and therefore you know when you get that card you can use it. The other thing mm. is the flyers uh, that were in here. The, even though it's a 2-3 flyer, eh, there's things with better abilities. The fact that, uh, you know, even the Tome Raider which is in there, uh -huh. it's only a 1-1. One, one. But it's uh, three mana and gets you an extra card when it comes in. Yeah. And it has flying. So my general rule has been since, say, Amon Ket, um, I try to look at every card that goes in the deck and see that it has at least three uses. Okay. It's got to have not only be a creature, it has to have a keyword as far as the type that's useful, mm -hmm. and it needs to have an activated ability or it needs to have something on there that makes it worth playing. Yeah. So the next yeah. time we talk about keywords, we want to focus specifically on Commander. And I think looking at what other cards go with it, maybe set it off. Now it's you've got to draw that card or whatever, so just picking one card isn't necessarily it. But I think the easiest way to make an improvement to a deck is to look at the keywords and focus on what's good and what's trend in the meta. Yeah. What synergizes and... And what, what can win you the game. What can win you the game in a single turn sometimes. Yeah. At any rate, thank you very much for stopping by and talking about keywords. We'll Thanks be talking about me. some more of those uh, next time. Well, maybe not next time, but we will be talking about specific keywords that we can use to buff up our commander decks. Oh, yeah. Another topic, another future topic is I'd like to talk about original commanders. What original, original commanders. commanders? Something outside. Uh, we've all bought the commander decks. We've all buffed them up. There's different okay. ones that are standards. But I'd like to, and anybody watching, if you have suggestions of specific commanders that you'd like to see, um, that's maybe another topic we can cover in the future. Oh, yeah. Just kind of like off the beaten path, commander. Yeah, maybe? just something else that isn't uh, that isn't used. That I think I think my Orzov is a uh, off the beaten path. Yeah, commander. Yeah, we might have to take a look at that deck. Yeah, then. for sure. All right, <laughs> cool. Well, there's some things to look forward to. Uh, again, we are looking to build a community here, so we want to hear your input. So, to that end, be sure to like, leave a comment, comment, below. and subscribe. Cool. Yeah. All right.